Hey everyone, my name is Peyton and this is episode 2 of a series where I'm building a haunted house. If you have not already watched episode 1, check it out below in the description, but I just basically go over the block out of this scene inside of episode 1 and set up what we have here. But here in episode 2, what we are doing is basically replacing all of our block out that we did inside of Unreal Engine with actual models and a mod kit that I built quickly in Maya. I am using metrics inside of Maya to try to get this on a grid. Uh, that way it's a bit easier to work with. And then with all the different instances and all, uh, it's really quickly to replace things at a large scale. Uh, so as you see here again, I brought in some of my 4x4, 2x2 pieces that are my walls and everything. Um, even the, the big window there I believe is a 6x2, um, so, or a 6x4 I, I believe, like with the, the height and the, the width. So I try to make everything um, in a power of two, that way it can easily snap together. And then here I have also just a little kit for my actual um, like patio and my, my porch that I have for the surrounding areas of the house. And I also have that on a grid, of course. So I'm basically just popping out that and building it out. Um, it's going to get a little bit bigger than what we had in the block out, but that's totally fine. Uh, the block out's mainly just to get the, you know, the actual form and everything going on with it. Um, but as you see here, like with the, the snapping, as long as you have your uh, grid elements set up correctly, um, then things should snap pretty easily. And uh, yeah, it just makes it easy because if I need to go change a window model or uh, like a wall or something like that, even doing the UVs, I can just quickly do that one asset inside of Maya. Then when I re-import it, of course, it's just propagating throughout the entire environment. Um, so I'm setting this up right now. And of course, we'll probably change things around a bit but uh really just want to have the the ground basis for all of this uh set up so far so now i'm getting rid of some of those things um kind of like the rocks and all of that that are around the the house uh, just because they're getting a little bit in the way um and now i want to uh, actually start to think about uh, my my porch and the the railings the columns that i have on the roof element here uh, so as you see, I'm kind of jumping back into Maya, back into Unreal, and back and forth. Um, and this is how I kind of uh, work with my mod kit pieces. Um, it makes it a very easy workflow, uh, just having it all set up that way. And um, yeah, keeping things organized, I think, is pretty essential uh, through this process. Um, but here, again, I made this roof... Um, mod kit very similar set up in the same fashion i believe it's uh two um wide like two squares wide basically and uh yeah throwing that around real quick so um and then even the corners that we have are set up on that same metric and so uh yeah makes it really easy to actually throw around um and still use the same kit that i have with the the rest of my building and all um, and I'll have to probably go back and forth and adjust some of these things because it's not going to be perfect. You know, something might be slightly off depending on how you have your walls angled. Uh, if they're not like crashing into each other, can leave like a bit of a gap. Um, but here back in Maya, we are just yeah quickly building out. We have our column and just building out a little railing as well. I uh, want to have it inside of here just because... If I can get the right uh, metrics and everything for it, even if it's just still sort of a uh, like a mod kit block out inside of Maya, um, it's replacing that grouped mesh that I had inside of Unreal Engine. And so I can easily, like later on when I start to model it out further, um, put a lot more details, I can just update this and it'll update everywhere. So uh, that's, yeah, really the, the main goal here is it's my second stage of, you know, we did our block out, our initial block out inside of uh, Unreal Engine, and now I'm wanting to do that uh, my block out. Um, and it's kind of a, a yeah, two step process. Um, but now I can have things make sure that they are actually a bit more on metric and all of that. Um, so this one as well, similar to the pieces, it'll be a little bit different because. Uh, you know, my walls are set up slightly different with some of those larger windows in the front. Um, but I am keeping it on the same grid 
So I believe these are uh, four wide um, and of course probably like one meter tall or so. Um, but what's nice as well is if you put the center of the pivot inside of those columns, it can really easily snap um, real quick to the middle as you see here. Um, and yeah, I just have to slightly adjust my stairs and all, but overall, um, you know, things are still feeling pretty accurate to what we had in the initial block out. Um, but instead now what we have is, uh, things are all on a grid and kind of, uh, built with that mod kit. So, um, it's going to save a lot of time when we get into the, uh, the rest of the building process and trying to get, um, all of that. So just going to delete real quick the rest of uh, the old like grouped um, railings and everything because we don't really need those anymore and yeah just gonna of course now update to uh, my windows with the just temporarily because we're gonna replace these eventually as well um, but I wanted to put a couple of these uh, emissive windows on the left side uh, just to play around with that glow but yeah, now you can see that my patio, my front patio is a little bit taller, um, slightly more accurate to I believe real world, uh, like, uh, like porch height, um, because we'll have like a bit of a lip kind of sticking down as well, uh, when we get into the models. So I'm trying to think about all these things as I go into that, um, you know, but yeah, jumping back over to Maya, uh, we're just really quickly doing like a, a block out stair. It's going to be quick and messy, but it does the job. Um, and as you see here too, as we get into uh, Unreal Engine, it might be slightly off with the overall scale. Uh, so I might have to actually, um, yeah, like adjust it later on. So it won't be too much of a problem. But uh, now next thing I want to do is set up my uh, actual fence. And so this is uh, a... Well, I'm just finalizing the um, the the porch area and the top, uh, and so one thing that yeah I need is that two by two uh, or two by one um, sized, and because it finishes off that that right side, um, and then what I'm going to do with this is uh, basically get my fence. Uh, so yeah, just slightly changing my current railing um, that I have. And going for that, yeah, fence look. And again, this is just a block out that I've done inside of uh, Maya. And then we'll bring that into uh, Unreal Engine and place it in. That way, it, again, just like the railing, we can really quickly update it uh, as we move forward with the, the rest of the models. Um, so, yeah, get that out and bring it in. So this one's a little bit less of a, uh, I guess, organized. Um, so I'm bringing in my stairs, of course. Uh, as I was saying earlier, I think the the scale's a little bit off. Um, but what's nice about this is, of course, I can jump back um, when need be and actually adjust uh, the stairs. But everything's lining up on the grid properly, so that's really nice. Um, and yeah, now I'm kind of placing around my fence. Uh, again, the main thing with the fence is it's not really set up on a grid or anything, so it's going to take a little bit longer to place around since I do have some of that like kind of or organic placement with it slightly broken and all. Um, we'll get more into that again with uh, when we get into the like the rest of the modeling, um, but I think this is just a good indication to start off with uh, is just replacing those um, pretty quickly and uh, yeah, just... It's the main goal again is to get some more form and trying to replace as many of the Unreal Engine like pieces as possible because uh, you know those aren't things you're gonna want to UV and everything. So trying to get a uh, a Maya like modeled setup uh, with our assets and mod kit um, to really yeah help that. So gonna quickly adjust my stairs one more time just because they don't feel uh, accurate scale wise um, so yeah just quickly doing it the dirty way um, and basically yeah just bridging these together now I have this I'll clean it up later uh, like the sides and the back and everything because um, we'll probably put some railing on them too um, but I think the main goal right here is just to get them to uh, kind of the human scale 
Now we'll finish up the rest of this uh, roof and everything uh, in the next video, just getting that actual mod kit and everything in here. Um, but I think this is a pretty solid start for the, the main part of our mod kit um, and our house. Um, so now what I want to do is I'm going to use speed tree to quickly just block out a, a tree that kind of represents my um, environment a little bit more. I think with this really, uh, you know, I have that cylinder and cone in there. It's working to get like a, a large uh, trunk shape, but I really want more of um, just the identity of what type of tree that we might have in there. Um, I haven't decided yet if we're going to do a dead tree or if it's going to be alive and just have, you know, have leaves and everything like that. Um, but I think it's nice because speed tree is not really a destructive program, I would say. So it's really nice because yeah, we can get, uh, like a quick look and block out of our tree, get it into engine. And then later on kind of come back in here. Um, and if we want to add, uh, you know, more to it, adjust things, uh, or even add, um, our Atlas and actually have cards and everything like that. Um, it's really quick with that. So I'll probably... Yeah, decide later on whether or not, kind of depending on the composition, if I want to have a dead tree or a, um, a, a tree that's yeah, maybe a little bit more fall-like uh, and the leaves are starting to fall off, but they haven't uh, fully like um, yeah, fallen off of the tree. But again, um, yeah, just trying to get a, a quick block out that's more representative of what we're wanting for the overall composition. So here, of course, adding some roots and everything um, down bottom as well. Uh, just something to help kind of give a, a nice kind of gnarly, um, kind of the spooky vibe that you would think about with a yeah, tree um, and getting that for the, the bottom parts. Uh, and then, yeah, again, these cylinders were working, but I think this is going to work much better. Um, so getting these in and we'll eventually kind of update the material as well uh, for them so it's not white. I uh, do want to use that kind of block out gray that I was already using as well for that. Um, but again for now um, I'll probably adjust it but I want to just place them in the same places that my cylinders were working. Uh, you know these might not be the permanent location uh, for the trees. Um, but yeah, starting to think about composition again, going back to our screenshot that we have locked and uh, really playing around with, you know, how are they framing the building um, and the house? Uh, how are they looking in comparison to each other? Getting a little bit of like height and scale difference. Um, and yeah, just trying to get the tree in here uh, for this. So that's about it for this week um, and the actual episode two of this. And the next one, we'll be diving more into mod kit and our overall models. Um, so, yeah, hope you enjoy the series and continue to follow along. And I'll see you in the next video.